Hey, how are ya? Welcome to another mini PC review. Today we're checking out this one. This is the Chewy Core Box with a 12th generation Intel processor, 6 cores, 8 threads, 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte SSD, and it has a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 interface. Now, I didn't have any USB 4 or Thunderbolt devices, so I reached out to Oracle. They sent us one of their Thunderbolt 3 docking stations which supports this interface and we will also be checking this one out in this video. The Chewy Core Box comes with an Intel i3-1215U and you might hear i3 and think this is an entry-level machine but this is latest generation and really it performs like an i5. We have 6 cores and 8 threads. There are 2 performance cores with hyper threading plus 4 efficiency cores from the Alder Lake generation. 16 gigabytes of DDDR5 memory running at 4800 MHz. The RAM is not upgradable and we have 512 gigabytes of storage. This is upgradable, a NVMe M.2 SSD. In the box, we get the mini PC power supply, a user manual, screws and an adapter to install a two and a half inch SATA drive. The power supply has 90 watts. At the front is a power button with a power LED. On the sides, there are just some outlets for the cooling and here are all the ports at the back. Here goes the power supply. We have four USBs with five gigabits per second. Display port goes here and I tested 4K60 with RGB. The HDMI port can also do 4K60, but only in the YCBCR420 color space. Gigabit ethernet is here. Audio ports for the microphone and the headphones. And this is the one of the highlights of this machine, the USB 4 uh, port with 40 gigabits per second of transfer rate. This is the Orico Thunderbolt 3 docking station, TB3S4. And in the box, we get the docking station. It came with a little stand with two screws, a screwdriver to assemble, a little instructions booklet and a power supply. The power supply is rated at 65 watts and it comes with a USB 4 cable. I really like how they labeled the ports with the transfer rates. So USB 2 with 480 megabits, then we get two USB ports with 5 gigabits and one USB port with 10 gigabits. Two USB-C ports, both with 10 gigabits and here we have uh, card readers for SD cards and you can plug in a headset here with a TRS connector. More ports at the back, power supply goes here. So you can plug in heaps of external hard drives and whatnot and still have enough power. Gigabit ethernet, we have optical audio out. This one is a USB 2 port. Thunderbolt 3, this one is a output. Thunderbolt 3 input to connect to your laptop or this mini PC and display port. This one I tested at 4K60 with RGB. There are four screws here and you can easily access the machine. The memory and the Wi-Fi module, they're all soldered onto the main board. The only thing you can upgrade is the storage. So you can replace the M.2 NVMe with something better. And you can also install a two and a half inch SATA SSD using uh, this cable here and the supplied screws. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth comes from Intel. We have the Intel AX201 Wi-Fi chip, which is fairly decent. And connecting to my NAS over a Wi-Fi 6 router, I'm seeing around 60 megabytes per second of transfer rate. That is pretty decent. And now we will have a look at some benchmarks, Cinebench and games, but we will also talk about fan noise, the power consumption and the temperatures. In Cinebench R15, we're getting 900 and 230 points. In R20, we're getting 2,151 and 623 points. And in R23, we're getting 5,387 and 1,633 points. Running Cinebench R23, the multi-core benchmark, the machine pulls 33 watts. And we can see that the performance cores boost to 2.9 gigahertz with the efficiency cores running at around 2.3 gigahertz. There is a maximum temperature in the 70s, but that was really just for a brief moment. The average temperatures are in the high 50s, which is excellent. The single thread test, the machine pulls 27 watts. The performance cores run at four gigahertz. I also saw 70 degrees of maximum temperature, but that was just 
a short moment and the average temperatures sitting in the mid 50s. So that is excellent. One thing that doesn't come across in this video is how snappy and responsive this PC felt. Simple tasks like uncompressing files, installing games or applications, everything felt really snappy. The cooling solution is fantastic. It is a little bit audible, but the fan speed is constant. So it doesn't rev up and down, which is nice. And even when you put it under load, the fan speed doesn't change. It's nice and quiet sitting in the background. So I think uh, this is one of the best machines in terms of cooling performance and uh, lack of noise. Let's run some 3D Mark benchmarks in Ice Storm Extreme 81,245, in Cloudgate 18,357, in Skydiver we're getting 10,996, in Night Raid 13,063, and in Firestrike 3,408. It comes with Windows 11 Pro. I ran all the Windows updates and then manually installed the latest Intel drivers, specifically the ones for the graphics. Let's test some games. Dirt 3 is first, my favorite racing game. 1080p with high details and it runs at over 60 FPS. This is actually really surprising. And uh, yeah, it, it sets the tone. This machine, you can definitely play games on this one. Here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, so pay attention, this does not run at 720p like I usually test mini PCs at. We're running at 1080p. With the lowest graphics settings, I have enabled the Intel upscaling technology and we're getting around 30 FPS. Brilliant result. Uh, again, I'm quite impressed. And in Strange Brigade, we can see similar excellent performance, 1080p with low details. It hovers around 40 FPS. This is really good to see. So this is not a bad mini PC, but does it run Crisis? In Crisis, I saw something similar to the Intel Arc and this mini PC uses the same drivers actually. So it runs the game, but there are a lot of hicks and stutters and this is likely to do with uh, the drivers not being optimized for older games for older APIs. So ideally, if you wanna run games on this machine, stick to DirectX 12 and Vulkan API games. With modern Intel graphics, you also get excellent video acceleration. It can do H.264, H.265, but also new codecs like VP9 and AV1. So what is my verdict on this mini PC? For $350, you get quite a decent package. Yes, it's called an i3, but really it feels like an i5, something much more faster. With six cores and eight threads, you get decent multi-threaded performance, but also single-threaded tasks are very snappy and responsive. And the Intel graphics, also a nice improvement over some of the other mini PCs we tested in the past. Modern games, even at 1080p, you can squeeze out 30 FPS, which is pretty impressive. The Thunderbolt 3 docking station from Oracle also turned out fine. All the ports worked. All the specifications check out. There were no surprises. Comes with a power supply, so enough power to charge all your devices. You're looking at around $209 from Amazon. I will put links to both of these devices into the video description. If you enjoy mini PCs, I will put up two videos onto the screen for you to click on and check out. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please share your thoughts. What do you think about this mini PC and the docking station? And happy to see you again in a future video.